Uh, hi, everybody. I hope everybody gets seated. Um, welcome to the uh, IETF 11A joint ops area. Actually, only ops AWG session today, because uh, for the first time, we've split this up into two sessions. This is session number two, if you missed the one on Monday. So otherwise, hello again, or hello, welcome at this meeting. Excellent. All this has been recorded, and therefore, uh, also subject to the Notewell. Notewell is our content. Uh, so you, uh, whatever you say, there's a uh, copywriting, there's a, um, I want to say, uh, there's a uh, rule, whatever you say here goes on record in multiple ways, also IP-wise. Next slide, please. And there's also a note really well, which is basically well conduct and not uh, content. Um, so whatever you do, I hope that you treat others like you want to be treated. Uh, if that is not the case, you can approach the chairs, uh, the ombudsman, the ADs, there are people here that you can uh, uh, approach in confidence uh, if you think something is going wrong behind the scenes. We can't see everything, and I think that's important for us that you have uh, the courage then to approach us. Um, there's a tool, um, uh, please everybody, and this, I mean everybody, uh, either scan the QR code, it's not a trick, uh, with your phone and then be with the uh, uh, hand raising tool uh, online here, or just join the full fledged uh, meet echo via the agenda or data tracker. Um, that's important for us because that is the new blue sheet. I know that there is an actual blue sheet, but this is yet again, only this QR code here. So in order to track attendance here and to assess how many people are in a room physically, for example, we need these numbers, otherwise we can't plan future meetings. Um, if you find any other issues with the tools, uh, I would recommend the link at the very bottom. Uh, please file issues if you think something is really going wrong. My Meet Echo has a very wonky feature that I have never seen before, and I file an issue for that. <laughs> Next slide, please. So yeah, um, I haven't introduced myself and ourselves well today. Uh, so I'm Hank, and my esteemed co-chairs are Tiran and Joe. And uh, we will have to stall on something that is called the minutes takers. Uh, every session has to be, uh, um, has notes, has to have notes. Uh, on the data tracker, there is a note link. And uh, if somebody could uh, uh, put, put, paste the note link into the chat, that ha would help even, I think. And uh, we need uh, volunteers from the audience, from the attendees, to take notes, which does not mean that we have uh, to record anything verbatim. But if there is a decision point, especially with uh, document progress or some other discussions that are on the mic and uh, not in the presentation, um, these should go into the notes. So we need uh, volunteers, and we have one, Rob, Rob. and then a... no, 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 Rob Wills. Oh, well. <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're the auto default, but that is all. <laughs> you're the gateway of last resort. Thank you for that. And uh, Rob, if, if you could be the safety net, then, then we are A-OK. Okay, okay um, moving on to the next slide. I think we come to the... Uh, um, newest call that we would like to do, uh, just as an announcement, sometimes documents move in our IETF process and uh, will become adopted work of the working group. And uh, at that, we want to now, at that point, assign shepherds early. Um, so sometimes it's, it's, it's common to uh, select a shepherd at the working group last call. That's pretty late because the shepherd is intended to somehow um, um, accompany a document's life cycle as an adopted item. It's also easier to remember what happened when you have a, a small uh, eye on it over time. So uh, whenever we will issue a um, call for adoption, we will uh, complement that with a uh, call for shepherd. Uh, that's kind of an opportunity to become uh, like a micro chair because uh, it includes some chair duties. If it's somewhat blocked, uh, you can, you can uh, indicate that, you can talk to our authors, uh, you have uh, only small responsibilities. The biggest thing is the write-up in the end, what ha has happened as a working group item. So that is something to get more experience in the, the IETF process without becoming a full-fledged chair, and it's really, really 
uh, we want to re recommend it if you're interested in uh, gaining more experience. So that's just a heads up. And now to the status, what that good to do? So if, if, for those of you who were at our first session, not much has changed except two new RFCs. So congratulations to the working group and authors on the updates to the TLS transport model for SNMP. That was just in the queue prior, in the prior meeting and export of segment routing over IPv6. I mentioned it was just about there. Well, it is now there as of this morning. So thank you again to the working group. Uh, this means we've got some slots free for new work, but as you can see, we are a busy working group. So we have a lot happening and we do appreciate all of the uh, comments, all of the suggestions, all of the questions and discussion on the list. And with that, our administrator is out of the way and we can welcome the first presenter that is in the room, wonderful. Hello, everyone. My name is Nezhina. It uh, translates to Snow White in English, uh, if that is easier to remember me. I am uh, here to present uh, two drafts in uh, front of the multiple contributors. One is called Sustainability Insight. Uh, Sustainability Insight has been mentioned in the number of the site meetings we have had uh, now here as well, previously in London and in Japan as well. Uh, PAWEF, we release, we published a couple of days back. We already received a uh, couple of feedbacks. Thank you. We had no time to address it, but uh, we will in the next version. Appreciate it. So for the ones not familiar uh, with the topic, our motivation to work on this is that uh, we are depleting the resources from our earth, and many companies have made a commitment to go carbon neutral by 2050. We see a lot of companies making, uh, defining the milestones, how to reach there, and they are mostly uh, measuring the progress against greenhouse gas protocol, uh, measuring scope one, three, uh, and uh, 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 emissions. Uh, now, in our work, we decided to focus first, first on the power. That is because there is some data that suggests that around 80%, a bit more or less, uh, emissions actually come from the products in use. So it's a very good portion. Uh, we plan our work uh, later on to extend to what happens during the production phase, what happens in the recycle phase. So to be able to cover the whole sustainability picture, but for now that is mainly focused on power. Now, when it comes to power, uh, there is a lot of challenges. And even though it sounds like a simple task in reality, when we start doing it, it is not. Uh, it range from data not being available at all in the networking equipment, data being available in the data sheets, data being not accurate. Uh, data varies from devices to devices, different measures being used, different sensors being used, uh, different accuracy of the sensors being available. And then uh, the implementation is obviously not consistent in terms of data modeling, transport, or encoding, but uh, I'm guessing for this working group that is nothing new because it's not a sustainability, but rather a wider telemetry problem. If I can get the next slide, please. Thank you. So in order to introduce the PAWEF, we decided to start with uh, giving you example. So if we have a very simple task uh, in front of us, and that is to calculate CO2 equivalent uh, emissions for the install base, we need the three main set of data. First one is a location, so where the devices are being located. The second one is a current inventory. And there, we don't mean only inventory in terms of amount of boxes and so on, but also what line cards are available in there, amount of ports and so on, because each of the line card actually draws some energy, and then associated power uh, consumption. Now, power consumption, when I say it, um, I'm thinking, uh, are, are we speaking about the real power consumption? So the, the consumption that we actually draw from the wall, apparent power, estimated power, and if a, 
consumer A or operator A calculates the real power, for example, versus the operator B that calculates estimated power from a data sheet, are they actually comparable values? Uh, the second um, complication or issue is that uh, we see that there is different sensors available. Sometimes we get watts, sometimes we get current, sometimes we get uh, voltage, we have to calculate a bit and so on. Uh, then, uh, in terms of uh, carbon emissions, so there is a formula that is widely adopted how actually to calculate the C uh, carbon CO2 equivalent. And that formula includes the carbon emission for the particular location, that is why we need the location, and the power being drawn, uh, estimated or real. Uh, those, uh, there are calculators available that actually can give us, for example, carbon emission for Prague in the last hour, and that can be used. They use, there is a number of tools in our proof of concept, we use the tool that is called the electricity map uh, for that, but then that might be not the real value because maybe we are actually having the solar panels and we are not consuming any power from the grid, so is that the right measure actually uh, to use? Then I just want to mention that we have obviously a lot of legacy products in the install base that are not meant to uh, optimize the power, but they are built with something else in mind. So they do not offer us any flexibility actually in scaling down the power when the, not all the resources are being used and so on. So you see me here speaking about multiple data that we actually need. And some of them fall into the inventory category. Some of them fall into the what we call static data category. And that is the rated power, for example, that we get uh, under very strict testing conditions that are being uh, defined by other standard bodies. Uh, and then we are speaking about the live telemetry uh, that we potentially could get uh, from a device. And then uh, we, we speak, uh, if we want to actually quantify the value for the amount of energy being spent, we actually have to account for, for example, throughput or CPU usage. What are we actually getting for that value? Do I take the question? It's up to you. Yeah, I can take the question. Hello, Daniele Ceccarelli, speaking as IV co-chair. So uh, I had the feeling uh, that part of this work uh, was related to inventory and you just confirmed it. Yes. So uh, just to uh, let you know that there is already some work in IV on uh, related to this. So maybe if you consider splitting the work of what goes into the inventory, maybe needs to be moved to IV, what is not inventory, better fits here, just, just to let you know. We have uh, one of the co-authors is on the other draft and it is in the next slide, thank you. So Warren Kamari, I think I said something similar at the EMPAC thing, but yes. I think that it would be better if we focus, at, for the moment at least, just on the power part and try and skip all of like CO2 equivalent, et cetera. That's a nice thing to do in the future, but if we can just at least start measuring and collecting and reporting that now, that would be a good like first step and we could make progress. Yes, and that is exactly what uh, we have addressed in the Power F draft. So we focused mainly on the power because that is what we can do right now. Marisol Palmero Cisco, I, I want to leave time to finish the session, but uh, there is no only discussions in the IV related to sustainability. There is a program impact and it might be coming more site meetings around the topic. In the future, it might be something more focused around sustainability, but just wanted to say that. Yeah, thank you. All right, so if we go to the next slide. Uh, so here it's a representation of the PowerF data model that we have presented in a PowerF draft. You see IV right on top. So <laughs> we are accounting for that. Uh, and here we wanted to give example in the previous use case that I have mentioned actually that the data that we need to perform any calculations, if we will, or to gain any insights, we actually have to split them around. Part of them is inventory, part of them is the static data, part of it, it is uh, in uh, live telemetry. We have proposed the young data model that is part of the PAVF uh, draft as well. 
and uh, if we can go on the next slide, uh, but we, uh, once when we have a data, so once when we agree about the data to be used, metrics to be used, young modeling and so on, uh, we think it is also important that we actually have a sustainability framework that help us all together be consistent because uh, if we are processing the data differently, then uh, we believe that is not going to be most optimal. So that is why we actually gave a proposal how the sustainability insights framework should look like. This one is a part of the other draft, so sustainability insights draft that focuses more on the framework and a big picture, use cases, and so on. Um, and then here, I actually want to mention again the work that has been presented, I believe, in the NetConf. Uh, group as well. So while we were preparing uh, for the hackathon, uh, we actually came to the conclusion that this is not only a sustainability problem, that there is a wider problem around processing the uh, young telemetry, processing something that is maybe not young structured and so on. So uh, there is a draft that Jan has proposed and presented in the NetConf around uh, framework uh, that consists of the provider, collector, aggregator, and processor, uh, how actually to, to, to process the data, wider data, other data than uh, sustainability. So that brings me to the end. Uh, uh, we have a proof of concept that we are working on using the PAVF model uh, that is documented. Uh, we plan to continue working on it because we have gotten some feedback from our initial partners that it is valuable work and helps process data more consistently. Uh, but we wanted to bring this here to see if this is something that uh, audience think it is work that should be continued. Uh, we are aware of the other work. I believe Alex Clem uh, has presented already in this forum, but also in the other working group uh, on the topic of green metrics. We think that our work very well complements that work. Uh, we are aware of the other drafts uh, that are looking more into sustainability per flow and uh, similar. So we think that the PAVF could be actually used as a very good base to support all the other, all the other uh, use cases and proposed drafts. Then we would like to get the feedback, are the derived metrics we are proposing the right ones? Uh, there has been a lot of controversy and a discussion on the mailing list previously. Uh, so we are actually looking to find uh, any better metric if there is any. Uh, and then, uh, I would like to invite everyone to point out any other previous work uh, or similar work where the, we could co collaborate and we would like to invite everyone to contribute. Thank you. Uh, while you come up, Marisol, I have a question really for ADs. Um, it sounds like there might be other work, other projects happening here. Um, is this the right working group for this, in your opinion, in, in the AD's opinion? Um, so, so maybe, I think the key, I think the thing I'm interested in, is they're interested in doing this work. And I think so, the, what I would like is, could you do a show of hands poll for effectively, is there interest, I think it's like, is there interest in this topic? So it doesn't have to be specifically this draft, but I want to know, is there interest in this room in working on this topic? Because uh, you said mentioned there's other drafts as well. I think that would be worth knowing. And then if we if no there's interest, we can find where to take the work. It could, it could be here, it could be IV. Um, so. Actually, if I can kind of modify what Rob said, he said sort of doing this sort of stuff. And I think that might've been a little bit hand wavy. I think we should be talking about are we interested in working on and then a fairly specific like constrained sort of stuff like specifically just the energy impact not the rest of the environmental impact blah 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 because i think this very quickly spins into like mm -hmm. you know what's the impact if somebody has to cut down a tree so that they can then like plant corn so that they can raise beef so that they can make the like wheels that makes the ceo's car who has the like mining conglomerate who makes the metal that then makes the juniper router that i use right that gets unwieldy One thing that I, I would like to add, Marisol Palmero from Cisco. Um, I have been attending this site meeting um, Marisol, before. A closer to them. Oh, sorry. 
I have been attending this site meeting before on open config and young, and this was one of the first questions we were coming on, right? Uh, where to go? Should we go to ITF with this data model? Should we go to open config? And many of the challenges that has been presenting apply to this uh, use case. A use case that needs to be solved in no time, right? We don't have five years to define those metrics. And if we can influence somehow on uh, uh, some of the regulations that are there, it has been also raised in the e-impact discussion. There are a lot of regulations where ITF doesn't have that direct feedback uh, uh, loop to uh, contribute into that. I, I think it's a real problem, it's a real use case, and it's something practical that we can use that could also link to that discussion. It was uh, around open config and young, and we could take the opportunity to, to address it that way. Thank you. Well, you see the results of the poll. It's not overwhelmingly, of, of all the participants, 50, 76 participants, um, but 20 said, of this topic, there is interest. So. Um, I, I, I do personally, I think it's interesting um, and you can kind of see what they've got there. Um, whether or not this is the right place uh, could be, um, but that's why I wanted to know if there was thought of maybe this is, in my opinion, a good place, but there might be so much desire to spin off another working group for this. That's what I'm kind of getting at. I, I think this might not be big enough to do a working group for. So I think I would rather it starts here and if necessary, it can move somewhere else. And I know, and this again is my personal feeling, I'm quite keen that we try and move fairly quickly. If we want to do this work and, and publish the stats, let's not spend a year talking about how we're going to do it, actually get the document adopted. If there's interest, if there's enough support, and then sort of move forward and try and get some get this published because I think we've been talking about this stuff for maybe six months a year and maybe more. So let's actually just get ahead and actually get it get it done. I guess. Wow, I'm not an accused. I'm just going to jump it. Um, so yeah, following on from that, there has been some discussion on making an energy operations working group or something, but you know that'll take ages because we'll have to charter it and fight about the charter for six months and blah blah blah. I think a reasonable idea would be start it here with the understanding it might move to a new working group if that happens in the future, but you know there's no shame in moving a document. It'll just help it move. So. And sorry, we, we, we went way over, Alex. We got a little bit of buffer, but um, not that much. And I want to give fairness to the rest of the people. Shazana, thank you very much. We have... Short. Ah, it's not going to be shorty. Welcome. Behind the, yeah, on the on the pink X. Thank you. So hello everyone. I'm going to present some work we introduced on exposure of communication and compute information uh, for infrastructure infrastructure aware uh, service deployment and selection. Next slide, yeah. please. Next slide. So the background motivation and problem space is service life cycle and information uh, related information exposure for services that are highly compute intensive. So one, two keys, two key steps in these life cycles are service deployment, where the action to take is place the service, you need information on both compute and network. And the entity who needs it, it's the service provider. And we have already uh, work, previous work on that in the outer working group. The second key step is uh, service placement and uh, service selection, sorry, where you have to select the service point and you also have to select the point, uh, the path that's going to the service. So that also needs uh, compute and communication information. Uh, who needs it? It's the network provider and the application client or proxy thereof. And there is already uh, ongoing work on this one uh, at the CATS and Auto Working Group. Uh, and not to mention, of course, uh, steps for service assurance. Next slide, please. 
So uh, this all requires to have exposure of communication and networking uh, information, but that requires to have a common understanding on what you are exposing as an information. So the regarding standardization, uh, there is quite major work regarding network information, but that is still in progress in uh, regarding communication information. So as the first, as a first step, we feel we need to define a common set of compute metric that you expose, that you provide to uh, the decision entities uh, as to, for, to support the various use cases that are being served at the IETF. So uh, there is already a work existing on this topic that we have categorized in three, uh, in three aspects uh, in the draft. One is raw compute information. So you just uh, go uh, dive into the machines and look at the CPU, RAM and, and memory. And so, and this is carried like, by bodies like uh, Etsy and FV. For example, the second category is uh, one of them uh, is uh, addressed in the ITF uh, with a MIB RFC, uh, looking at what resources share you get in a virtual machine uh, for your service. And the last one is more service metrics, inclu including compute related information that is assessing the somehow the, the how your service is running in terms of delay, availability, and uh, other uh, um, metrics. So next slide, please. So why we present this work here is that re when we look at the related art, uh, we realize that consumers of compute information can be diverse and located at different levels of the infrastructure. So you can have applications, users, controllers, router that need this information. Therefore, the set and scope of these metrics is manifold. So you can look at CPU, raw machine capabilities, but you can also look at their uh, transformation into aggregated delay or availability over time, short scale, uh, long scale uh, time performance, etc. So the, we also know that compute metrics are being defined in several body and this work is in progress. So uh, as I um, already mentioned, we have ITF, Etsy and uh, bodies like uh, Linux foundations that are looking at APIs to expose them. And you also have of course the cloud providers. So this calls for a common framework to specify these metrics uh, to support trustable compute capability assessment. And we think that the OPS AWG uh, could be a good venue to uh, federate efforts and uh, on this uh, topic. So with the goal of leveraging already existing work and reaching out to whoever uh, at the IETF, the working groups would be interested in uh, working on this topic and uh, gathering, of course, use cases that we may miss uh, in our current work. So uh, to provide some more details on some this aspect, we will have a site meeting uh, uh, today at uh, 3.30 in the room Carlin, where we will uh, talk about exposure of computer and networking metrics which includes, of course, defining a common set of metrics. So we would like to gather the feedback of this working group to see whether this makes sense and uh, who uh, in the ITF would be interested. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Adrian Farrell. I'm co-chair of the CATS Working Group. Uh, CATS has a specific charter item to work on metrics, so I would be um, enthralled 
by the idea of the ADs saying, let's have two places working on metrics. Um, I will say this at your side meeting later, but um, compute metrics have specific uh, needs for specific applications. And you may find that grouping them all together in, in a big groupy pile actually makes them unusable in any of the applications. So work out very carefully first what it is you need to know for the thing you're trying to do, and then move on to the metrics. Um, so I'm glad that Adrian came to the mic, so thank you for that, because I was having that question is, is looking at the previous slide, maybe, uh, I don't know which one, you had a diagram of where, this one, of where it goes. Within the IETF, I think the plan is that Alto is going to finish the documents it's currently working on, and then it's going to likely close, is my understanding. So, so Alto will probably disappear from this picture in terms of what's happening there. And so then I was thinking is, is the only consumer of this stuff within the IETF going to be cats, and in which case, then it seemed to me that maybe working on this within CATS would be a better choice. But I do take Adrian's point is that uh, I think that the scope of what CATS, the metrics they're looking at is potentially slightly smaller and tighter than what's being discussed here. Uh, let, let me give an example. Um, CATS is trying to steer traffic um, in the here and now, right? We have a service request we need to process. Uh, this is the amount of compute we need. Uh, where is that compute available? Uh, other applications might say, where are we going to spawn new instances, containers, whatever? Where are we going to do truck rolls? Very different type of uh, metric needed there. Yeah, so uh, I would say that's exactly uh, our point. So. It is not about defining five metrics that are good for everything. So in the, maybe in one of the next slide, I just, uh, we illustrate that the user, uh, the application where you need these metrics, depending on at which level, when you do typically service placement, which is another, uh, another uh, um, important, life cycle step. So we, when you do service placement, you definitely don't want to use the same metrics as cats would, yep. because then you, you, you really look deeply in the, uh, in the infrastructure. I'm so, sorry to cut you off, Sabine, but we, we will run out of time at this okay. point. So I, I noticed this draft was published on October 23rd, which was the cutoff date. And, and I would encourage you to generate some of this discussion on, on the list to see who in here might be interested. And it sounds like with the side meeting and, and what Adrian said about cats, there might be a different place for this, but unfortunately we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to move on from an agenda standpoint. Olga, I think it's you and please, we've kind of eaten up our buffer if you can keep to the 10 minutes. I will promise. I promise. I'll do. Hi, uh, I, I, I want to share some experiences we have with modeling digital map based on RFC uh, 345. Uh, next, little, please. Sure, the okay. So uh, I will talk in front for the authors and contrib contributors of this draft. Next, please. So compared to the last version, we are now at version 01 and uh, we expanded the POC to include four different networks. We have access to two operator labs, we have Probe lab, and we have some simulated networks uh, in order to support some corner cases that are not uh, supported in the labs. And in this, uh, if you remember, the last phase was kind of uh, implementing from the uh, bottom to the services layer, but using uh, custom extensions uh, on top of RFC 8345. Now we included uh, layer two, to standard layer two topology RFC, standard layer three topology RFC, and OSCAR's drafts for uh, OSPF topology and ISIS topology. So uh, there is a typo there with OSPF twice, but one is ISIS topology, I'll fix that in the OSPF topology. 
and our focus was to see how to model ISIS and OSPF topology the right way. And uh, we found the new limitations and defined via the problems for these routing protocols and uh, we discuss some options, how we can address them. So these are the three uh, changes in the job. There, there is a lot of editorial changes and improvements, but I'm focusing on these three in this presentation. Next, please. So just to refresh on the objectives, I'll do the summary, in fact. What we want to achieve uh, doing this exercise is to see if RFC 8345 Young model is the good basis uh, to model a digital map, where digital map for us is the uh, topology at layer topology from the bottom, layer from the physical, virtual, up to the services layer using the common uh, patterns uh, and, and relationships and to identify any limitations and come back to the, uh, to the ITF with some changes and proposals. Next, please. So to refresh, these are the core use cases and requirements that we collected from the operators so far. So please, if you have any additional ones, uh, come back to us. So from the use case perspective, uh, we added some uh, from the previous version based on the input from the operators. And from the requirements perspective, we are addressing uh, some issues and limitations based on these requirements. The important thing is, although we are trying to model from a bottom to the services, from physical to the services, the important thing is that different users may use just some layers and have different requirements. So, you know, don't think that the users have to be aware of all the layers in the map. This is what has to be uh, for multiple use cases and for different users. Next, please. Uh, so, the, po the focus of this uh, phase is kind of alignment with uh, RFC 8345, RFC 8944, RFC uh, 8346, and uh, uh, drafts for OSPF and ISIS routing. The rest is done via custom extensions, and I won't talk about it. So as I said, we already have two customer labs implemented. Next, please, used for testing. These are the limitations that we identified and that we mentioned in the draft. The first two limitations have been there from the ver version zero and the proposed solutions are in the Nigel's and in the draft that we are working together, but it's Nigel's draft originally and, and uh, he's focusing on these two uh, limitations. Uh, we verified the next three link between domain networks, network parts of other networks and nodes, TPs and links in multiple networks during the uh, evaluation of the ISIS and OSPF topology drafts by Oscar, and we identified those limitations and some of them are additional ones, and the rest is uh, requirements for some additional supporting relationships. We need maybe relationship properties, termination point roles, layers, sublayers have to be further discussed because there are some kind of issues with circular dependency potentially, etc. And then we have to see comparison between the uh, network topology and network T topology uh, RFCs and which ones maybe we need to use some uh, things from the T topology draft. Next, please. So I won't go through the details, but just uh, maybe to say that for the three limitations I presented on the previous slide that have red border, uh, we want to understand why is it problem, to explain why is it problem for SIS and why is it problem for SPF. So, you know, when we have, when we don't have links between different networks, uh, we cannot really model properly ISIS topology. If you see on the top right corner, ISIS topology has links that are uh, shared between the networks, and and we have no, we don't have that capability in the RFC A three four five because the links are contained in the network, and the uh, the points, termination points of those links are just node and TP IDs, so you cannot point to the termination point of the different network. So that's limiting. Also, we have ASs, we have ISIS domains, we have areas, so we ha have hierarchical network structure. And the only relationship in RFC 8345 is supporting relationship, which you could use, but it's semantically incorrect really to use it for part of. And the third one is uh, that nodes and interfaces and links as well at the beginning belong to different networks. So, so either we denormalize some of those things or is there some other solution? 
and for OSPF, the second and the third issue is valid, not the first one, because links in the OSPF are not shared. Next, please. Uh, so these are some options, and we did both of the options in our box, but I, maybe I won't talk about these options. So we'll share the slides, and if there is any feedback or any other options that you guys can suggest, uh, it would be appreciated. Next, please. So this is example where we modeled ISIS areas with RFC 8345 limitations. And you can see that the only network we have is the ISIS domain, overall domain, and then you have the nodes that are part of that. So we really can't represent the topology in the right way through entity relationship. Application would have to go to specific ISIS attributes and understand the area addresses from there in order to build a topology. So there is no generic solution for this. Yeah, and it doesn't represent the ISIS topology. Next, please. So if I go to the second option that we implemented using uh, areas as networks, you can see that it matches very nice, that processes are grouped in the area via a standard uh, network node relationship. And, and uh, you know, this, this is the situation where it can scale because for small networks, maybe you don't need even the areas as networks, but here you definitely do for the bigger networks, you definitely do for scale. And it is aligned with the, uh, ISIS topology, and it's also aligned with all the manuals and training materials for the IGPs, you know, how the things work, so it, it would match perfectly. Next. So this is example from the customer lab with the, uh, with the re responses, uh, RESCONF responses for both uh, cases, uh, where we put uh, implemented uh, OSCARS uh, northbound ISIS and using southbound both ITF and OpenConfig. Uh, next. So we had a side meeting, and the important thing from this side meeting is really that uh, we aligned with customers, and cu uh, multiple customers identified the same uh, limitations and similar limitations, subset of them, different customers in RFC 345. And uh, also the interest was very high. Like, you know, when Benoit asked uh, how many operators are interested in digital map and, and addressing these issues, a uh, vast majority of them replied that they are interested. Next. So can I just go to one slide afterwards, uh, two slides afterwards, sorry. Hell, next one. So this is the slide that I just did very quickly, and it's a draft slide, but I wanted to share it here because I just wanted to position different things that we were talking about in terms of different drafts. So the blue ones you see, they're in the ops, and the IV one, I, I positioned it as a, a physical and a virtual topology. And, and you can see that uh, these are, this is subset, of course. We have 60 augmentations uh, in the ITF, and we will continue to evaluate them. But I would like feedback uh, and uh, from IV team as well, because I did discuss with them, and this is my understanding. Can we go back? Uh, what's next? So uh, we will feedback some of the comments back to Oscar to update the young there. We, we think uh, that SIV6 should really be done the right way from the beginning. So we would probably want to continue working on those drafts for topology. We will continue our evaluation and POX and uh, do one by one all those 60 augmentations and do so, some classifications in regards how it's been augmented, more operators and more labs. And, uh, you know, we want to start with drafts uh, in, on top of Nigel's fund uh, with solutions for those limitations, what to propose and engage the community in discussions, how to uh, enhance this. Thanks. Please be quick. Uh, so my question is, is what was being asked here is, uh, so one question I want to clarify, are you asking to open 8345 to do a BIS to fix it? Or are you asking to put augmentations onto 8345 to fix it? Or are you asking for something else? Because 8345 was done in I2RS, I think, which is now closed working groups. It's looking for new BIS work we need to be done somewhere else. So it was. I'd say BIS would be ideal, but you know, if, if, if there is a need for different drafts for augmentation, but I, I, if I would be voting, I would go for BIS, but it or, depends on the what, what's the preference of different stakeholders. 
Let's put the question another way. Is it extensions to the base model you're needing to do, or is it changes to it? As in, is it like a non-backwards compatible changes, fixes you need to put in? If you go to the, the draft, the, uh, Davis Ops AWG, he proposes two options, like, you know, through augmentation or changing the draft. So you can, you can do both, but we could achieve it through augmentation. Uh, uh, you know, we can augment that draft, but preference would probably be to do the BIS. Okay, possible. that might be good. But backward compatible BIS, of course, like, you know, you wouldn't, you would try to do, and the proposal that is there for the two limitations is it that it is backward compatible. Okay, it might be a good question to take the list and see there's interest there in the direction. Yeah. Yep. Italo, really yes. quick, please. Yes. Oh, my key question is that, comment is that um, some of these issues have been already addressed by RSC 8795 uh, in this uh, working group and the solution is quite generic. Uh, so I suggest to take a look uh, at what already exists there and see whether there is a gap because I don't think we need to have a, a solution for ISIS, a solution for OSPF, a solution for three transport and engineering networks. Uh, once we have already a, a generic solution that applies uh, broadly. Yeah, the, the important thing for us in, in this uh, activity is that, you know, in IV we have inventory use case. You guys have traffic engineering use case. We have many use cases. So what we want to try is to kind of come up with the approach that would be suitable for all of these different use yep. cases. I agree. And um, that's why if you look at the topology, that is quite generic. So you can, we can use the same, uh, we can use a subset together. Yeah. We so. could add your stuff as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's keep this going on uh, on the list. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Thank you. Who's next? Uh, modeling digital map, we did that. Alternate marking, Giuseppe, I think. Okay. Uh, hello, good morning. This is the, um, the, f the first time that I present this draft. As a zero zero version, um, it's about the EpiFix alternate marking uh, information. Next slide. I'm presenting on behalf of the co authors that uh, you can see on the slide. Next slide. Yeah, just a few words for those who are not familiar with the methodology. So, alternate marking is a standard track RFC already standardized in EPPM. So, you can see the reference document uh, that are RFC 9341 and 9342. Just a few words about the methodology. So, it basically can use two bits uh, to calculate loss and delay. So, if with one bit we can batch packets based on time interval to measure loss, with the second bits we can create a new set of market packets to measure delay. Uh, please have a look at the RFC if you're not familiar with methodologies. Next slide. Yeah, there is also an RFC 9343 that defines the IPv6 option for the application of the alternate marking to IPv6 data plane and, of course, also to SRV6. Um, the IPv6 option contains the flow monitor identification, the loss and delay flags, as I mentioned in the previous slide. What we want to do with this uh, new draft is to define the epifix extension for report, for data report. So for data decomposition, we uh, analyze that we can basically reuse uh, the packet header uh, section and the IP payload the packet section already defined in epifix. So uh, in general, the, the draft basically uh, analyze what already exists in epifix and can be used and what uh, can be defined as a new information element. For that aggregation, new epifix entities for flow mon ID, flow monitoring identification, loss and delay flag are needed, uh, and also the period identification. While for data correlation, of course, existing epifix entities can be used, such as host name, ingress interface, and so on. Next slide. Uh, Again, for measurement, uh, the packet count can be done by reusing the octet delta count, existing information element, and or packet delta count. To calculate delay, we can use the flow start seconds or millisecond or microsecond according to time precision and timestamp granularity requirements or flow hand millisecond, microsecond, and nanoseconds. Uh, so in the end, after all the gap analysis, the document requests IANA to create a new sub-registry 
call the epifix alternate marking and include the flow monitoring and identification, loss and delay flag, and period ID. Uh, next slide. Okay, yeah, I'm, I would invite to read the document and to share your comments uh, since we are the epifix expert in this working group. So. Thank you for being quick. Uh, we do have time. Any comments in the room or online? Oh, please. Oh, go ahead, no, I just want to add that there is also a related document on Young extension and um, deployment document in IPPM. So there are also related documents in IPPM. It might be worth uh, uh, bringing that up and, and trying to kick something off on the Ops AWG list to get people to, to read and comment more on that. I think you have posted on this. I've yeah, seen a few. Yeah, on mail list. Yeah. And, and hopefully once the IETF 118 wears off and people get around, we, we'll see some discussion. Okay. Thank you, Giuseppe. Thank you. Luis. So hello everybody, this is Luis from Telefonica. I will present this work that has been prepared together with uh, Victor Lopez from Nokia. So next please. So the, the idea, the objective that we uh, have proposed in this work is essentially to work in the uh, automation of the OAM test. The OAM testing is essential for getting a knowledge of the health of, of the network, how, how the network is, um, the performance is, is uh, being accomplished according to the SLOs and SLAs. So the idea here would be to work in, in modeling, uh, how to schedule different tests so that can help in that purpose. So we essentially focus on, on this automation of the test, uh, trying to reuse the work that has been done in the past in, in ITF uh, by defining a specific uh, test methodologies and test uh, technologies, or IM technologies. So next, please. So we introduced some terminology for the purpose of, of automating this uh, sequence of tests. So we define first the, what could be an OIM unitary test. With that, uh, essentially, we uh, um, uh, provide identification of the type of test that we want to, to run, the co uh, configuration parameters for, the, for that particular test, and the target results. So somehow we, we can check the test with the expected result. And then also we define the OIM test sequence, which uh, essentially would be this, this list of uh, or unitary tests that we want to run together with the uh, time constraint for running the, the sequence, the number of repetitions, the order, and so on and so far. Next, please. So the, the use cases that we, we uh, let's say, elicitate for, for the justifying the, the work of this automation is first the troubleshooting, so somehow reactive sequence of tests uh, when we identify some events on alarm or some alert in, in the network, something is going wrong. So the, the idea would be to run a test, uh, a, a sequence of tests in order to assess what is happening in the network. The second case could be the bare certificate so that we can run this sequence of tests just to be sure that the service will uh, behave as expected. So we, we can ensure that there will not be any problem once we deploy the service into the network. The third one will be the proactive supervision. So running periodic tests just to, to ensure that everything is going fine and that the SLAs are being met. And finally, the performance-based path routing. So in this case, the idea would be to um, complement, or I mean, to provide informed decision to the path computation elements. So in such a way that the PCE can uh, calculate the, the, the path according to the, I mean, ensuring that the, the behavior of the path will be conformant with the expected uh, be, uh, performance behavior. Next, please. So we, we are defining very preliminary uh, YAM models, probably uh, for sure should be refining in, in further versions of the document. So we first propose the uh, YAM model for the unitary test. I said, uh, adding the, the name of the test, the, the type of the test, the periodicity of the test, and also the recurrence of, of, of the test and, and the test status. So if the test has been um, uh, run successfully or not. Next, please. And then the test sequence. Again, we define the, the name of the sequence, the, the list of, re, uh, of uh, unitary tests that are part of this uh, specific sequence, the periodicity of the sequence, the recurrency, I mean, how recurrent we run the, the sequence, and, uh, and the status, so it's uh, successfully run or, or not. Next, please. 
So uh, essentially, this is a, uh, uh, I mean, we are in the preliminary steps of, of this work. So we would like to collect feedback from the working group, check if there is interest on in this activity. And yeah, our idea is to keep working on that and prepare new versions for, for next IPF meetings. That's all, thank you. Balaj. Hello, uh, one point that we see a lot of scheduler type uh, items. Shouldn't we have a general scheduler model somehow in Yang, instead of everyone defining their own? Well, there, there is an activity on the schedule definition. I think that, that we have a side meeting in, in this ITF, working on this as scheduling staff. So I think we cannot anticipate now the, what would be the, the, the approach follow, to be followed, but yeah, our idea would be to really, if there is a kind of common scheduling uh, way of, uh, yeah, we will be open to reuse that for sure. I would uh, like to see that in the NetMod group if possible. Okay. I just quick comment. I think this is quite interesting what you're doing here. So it's an interesting idea. My only question is why are they defined as like configuration nodes as opposed to in like an RPC or an action? You're telling to run the test. Is that, or is this the configuration? Then you have a separate RPC or action to actually execute the test. Sorry, Rob, I, I couldn't get you. So it looked to me from the Yang tree diagram that it's uh, modeled as, uh, as configuration. Whereas I would have thought this is a test, you're running a test, this is more like an, uh, an ephemeral action that you take, and in which case define it as a action or, an, or a young RPC. Well, it's, it's uh, I'm not sure I get properly the, the question, but it's, it's not necessarily ephemeral. So, oh, well, Victor wants to. I, I can answer, Rob. There are two parts. So, there is, if, for example, in one reflector, you need to configure the reflector. So, this is the part that we, we need to keep working, but you are right. How to reuse the models, how to, let's say, trigger the actions is something we will need the feedback from the group and, and improve it, but we started with configuration for the Tuan Reflector as an example. Thanks, Vit. Uh, Luis, thank you very much. Again, discuss on list, please. Thank you. Oscar, take us home. Thank you. I'll be quick here. So just the next slide. So here, just the rational, why, what, what are we trying to achieve? So what we're trying to achieve is to have a representation of the operator's network and being able to, to send it so it can be uh, consumed by planning tools and you can do what if analysis. So here, what was the goal? To use existing IDF technologies to build that. So we are using all the topology and models. So before you, someone jumps now, you can use the topology. And yes, of course, it's using the, all the IDF topology, the larger 3 d topology, etc., to represent that. But Okay, when we did that, we needed just some extra things okay, that uh, we, we require to be able to express that, hey, this is an ISIS domain, this is an OSPA domain. So next slide. So this is why we have two documents. Okay, One of these is the is this ISIS. So we did some, some updates there, some, uh, uh, some editorial changes, and uh, also in young base, uh, what we did was an alignment also with the uh, device models. Okay, So everything that is I ISIS specific, we took it from the ISIS young model and we put it here, okay, versus the first version that we did on, on our own. Here are the, the trackers and the principle is, uh, and this is, I think, the, the value of the how to represent a, a network like this. This is one of the, uh, represent a network like the ones that we have in one our, our operations. So here we are dividing them in clusters or, or processes. So here one instance of the ITF network for each of them. And for each of them, the information that is going to be there is, for example, if you have, um, let's say, some bandwidth or some packet relate or packet measurement information and so on, you take it from the ITFT topology models. Okay, so we don't redefine them here. You can already take it, take it from there. So we'll just add these extra things. So we'll go next slide. So what are the the, uh, well, the, the extra things that we, it's same in the ISIS draft and in the OSPF draft. So just in the network type, you just add one parameter that says, hey, this is a representation of a topology that runs ISIS. Okay, so it is not saying that the source of information is ISIS. Okay, so it just tells you, hey, this is an uh, ISIS uh, cluster or in the or in the OSPF case, this is running OSPF. We have a part of the model that also contains some information about the, the timers because it's useful to make simulations. And then there is some 
information that depends in the, in the SIS model or in the OSPF model, there were very a few particular uh, attributes from either uh, ISIS or OSPF in this case, okay, that uh, were also required to make the, to make the simulations. And as mentioned, they complement, okay, what is already existing in the layer three T topology and in the T topology documents. Okay, so here, uh, go to the next slide. So here, what uh, what we want to do is keep improving the young models, include which are the examples that. Uh, based on the implementation where you can see how all the models fit together and see a, an example of a topology putting everything together. Uh, also, as we are relying on existing documents, okay, we are also taking, having the limitations from there. Okay? So uh, that means the way to build a topology that the one that you saw at the beginning with the different uh, processes means that you need to have multiple ISIS, multiple ITF networks, repeat the node in multiple networks. So here, if there is some engagement that can be done, we are happy to, to do them. And please review the documents. Here, as, as we are reusing many things from a lot of topology documents, maybe some things can be optimized. Okay, so here we are uh, open to, to feedback. And question to the working group is if you are interested in taking this pack of work. And uh, also, we want also to, to check also with the different routing area working groups some, some feedback about this. Are you, are you presenting it in routing area? Uh, no, not 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 this time. Okay. Maybe maybe next one, or okay. we can just ask the list. Yeah, we can ask them. Well, it is we've got a few seconds here, but we're over our budgeted time. Comments? Well. In that case, thank you very much, Oscar. Um, everyone have a safe trip home. As Warren says, please get your NOMCOM feedback in and we will send out the minutes. We have a few AIs here, um, so we'll start some discussion. Please read some of this work. Uh, I know it's tough, you're traveling back home. When you get there, find some time, comment on list. And thank you very much for everyone's participation in Ops Area Working Group. I knew I knew our luck would run out at some point. I think one way is to uh, over, uh, over, over, we go to the next slide. Yeah. Like just take the slides away. So yeah. like, oh, this is not my name anymore. Yeah. You got a, you got a good point there. On the brink of doing it at one time, I was like, I'm just taking this slide. You got a good point there. <laughs>